All right, thanks everyone for jumping in today. Um, there are a couple of critical things that we have to discuss today. Uh, the number one thing that I wanted to bring uh, everyone's attention is the hashtag saving Brandon mission. I think we're doing better in terms of understanding what Brandon is doing and how to help him. Uh, it's, it's, it's still taking some proactiveness in terms of extracting it from him, but I see some action happening. So if you have NL, NLP specific skills and want to help him, just go ahead, join NL, NLP stack channel, uh, message him directly, and it, it's all yours. The number uh, two thing, which is kind of related to what Brendan is working on, is uh, FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions on the Corona Y data set. Um, it seems like we've produced something amazing, though most people are not aware of what that is and how it works. So uh, I've created the Trello card to explain what is that data, data set and how we can use it, what is uh, and ER, what is UMLS, and other things that Brendan was amazingly working really hard to create, and we should take advantage of all of that work. If you guys see that this FAQ is missing some question that you have, feel free to tag me or Brendan on that card, and we'll, we'll try to come up with an easy to understand answer. Where is that located? It's located in a... <laughs> in the main board, which is now called a general circle. Okay. Um, I have it on the invite, uh, the link to that Trello card. If you have the calendar invite, you can pull that up and, and open that. Especially will be super helpful for management team to understand uh, what kind of resource, resources we already have to use for uh, different teams working on different problems. Um, the other thing that I wanted to quickly mention is that uh, not sure how many of you got my email last night. Uh, seems like a lot of my emails are, are going into spam just because of unusual <laughs> large scale activity that is going on with, with my uh, Gmail. But um, I brought up a, a small um, task that uh, we formulated and that might be a, a good idea to explore in terms of testing our product, in terms of processes and structure and existing data sets, and seeing if we can apply it to tasks um, that are outside of Kaggle, but are equally, if not more important. So if you have um, a minute today, just go back to that email, open that conversation, and provide your two cents on it um, for, for us to kickstart the discussion. Okay, so uh, then discuss current blockers and how to make progress within individual tasks. Um, if anyone from the admin team has any uh, insights or any major blockers, um, that's the time to speak up. The main thing I would say is just really if we can start uh, with each of the teams either um, using that needs document so that we understand, because for the people who are onboarding, that's a great place we can look and direct people to figure out where they should direct themselves. Um, or if that document isn't working for us, let's figure out a different solution uh, just so that there's a universal approach that everybody as they come on or as they need a new task uh, can go to to figure out where to go. And I think that's going to improve things vastly. I agree. And I mean, as you know, top priority for us organizationally right now is just focusing on the most impact of select resources and distributing those resources in the in the right directions because there are so many things we could be doing and this is the optimization problem itself we just need to figure out the, the top priority items and allocate resources that way uh, hi Richard this is Shannon um, so sorry about all the back and forth on the lister issue yesterday um, we That's finally great. have a new list in the G Suite, which is the, I think, correct place to maintain it. And um, I still, for some reason, cannot update the calendar with this list, but you apparently succeeded, so perhaps you would be able to do it. Um, and I can, uh, I can confirm for you the, the new list email, and apologies to people that I, I think probably we should delete the old one just because the maintenance for it is very uh, annoying. Yeah, the, that help was tremendous. I really appreciate you helping me figure that out. Uh, the piece was Google Groups. It's, it's crazy complex. Just 
to, to figure out how it works and all of that. So yeah, thank you. I say I'm I'm learning there there are ways to use it more effectively, but they're not obvious at all. So I think I think we'll we'll figure out a flow and then it'll be much easier, hopefully. Sounds good. Anyone else? Okay. So let's proceed to individual team reports. Uh, again, the structure for the reporting, high level progress, quick summary, time to results, how soon can you show existing progress externally, and what is that progress, uh, which is becoming more important as we approach the deadlines for submissions of Kaggle tasks. We need to understand better what are the, those short intermediate results to explore, assess, and integrate medical experts into to provide the feedback. And what are the blockers? So high level progress, time to results, blockers. And we'll start with Maya, risk factors task. Uh, hi, um, probably um, the main <laughs> progress for today is that uh, finally I have a great and amazing tech guy who will help me with GitHub. And everything we've produced will go uh, on there in a nice and organized manner. Nice. Uh, but uh, besides that, uh, we are working in par parallel on sentences uh, extractions for multiple types of uh, risk factors. <clears throat> and uh, today, uh, I hopefully, Anton will help me to check something. <clears throat> and uh, here is my confusion. I need an advice uh, from you guys. From one side, probably it's really... Uh, good idea to present just the findings without further analysis. From another side, probably it's a good idea to actually present further analysis, but under the control of domain experts. This decision will majorly affect all my further actions. So at the moment, it would be lovely to agree on that. Yeah, let's let's maybe move that discussion into Slack. I do agree that it's uh, it will be great to integrate medical experts into this as soon as possible. Hopefully, after team reporting, we're going to get some update from Steve or Natalie on. I even, I even have a person who really helps me and understands what he talk about, and he made a di dictionary of terms, and he's just amazing. Okay, so what do you think is lacking in terms of? you know, taking those uh, intermediate findings and integrating them into the feedback loop of this guy? Uh, the, the general decision, do we go into uh, quality, uh, this is qualitative, do we go into qualitative analysis or we just say, here is the number of papers, here is the code, find it there, good luck. I think we can try both and just try it very fast and see what works. Okay. It's possible. So let's try to do that today. Uh, I'll try to sync with you too on, on that. And hopefully you will, will reach some decision that will also help propagate the same question for other teams. Okay, cool. Sounds Thank good. you. Uh, yeah. All right, next task. Gio, Daniel. Yes. Um, so we have now on the GitHub repository um, codes to extract granular data about uh, coronavirus spread uh, in a bit all around the world at a smaller granularity than just country. So for many countries, we have regions. Um, I mean, this is mostly just a sourcing from uh, another group of volunteers that's doing this. <laughs> um, right, with source and everything, so you can check uh, also for reliability. Uh, for specific regions, we are um, working on extracting potentially more accurate data. We have codes essentially re ready for the US. Um, I have teams working for South Korea and for Italy for India at least and we should very soon also have ready um, demographic data for Italy. Nice. And yeah but probably in the next couple of days and then we'll take it from there. Are we packaging that data into data visualization of some form or? Not yet that's in discussion with uh, 
uh, with Mark, with uh, Juan Vaca, and uh, okay. um, so, okay. so sorry, Juan Juan Calvo. Um, and uh, I mean, we provide good amount of the data with, for example, um, longitude, latitude information. So it should be relatively easy, and we're open to requests from them in terms of how to format the data in such a way that can use them, uh, the, you know, with uh, with ease. Sounds good. Any blockers? I would say we're fine for now. Perfect. I'll let Sounds you know good. if anything pops up. Next task, transmission, Christine. I believe Mark messaged me that she won't be able to join us, but let's see. Right. Uh, so yeah, we had some pretty good progress yesterday. Um, our search engine is very close to final. It's functioning already. It's just we're uh, they added some amazing interactive features, and after a few adjustments, we will be able to post it to GitHub. And we also already use it to uh, produce some initial search results for our sub questions. And I think uh, the results are pretty good. It's just, you know, it's sort of the trade off of precision and recall. So our recall is probably not as high, but the precision, I think it's pretty good. Um, so yeah, that's uh, in terms of article discovery. And we also have some started some discussion on, you know, like Maya say, what we want to focus on at this point, and I think we might actually be moving towards more information retrieval and data analysis route uh, from this point. Um, because we think search engine is now there are already a lot of good ones out there, and I think we might be able to contribute more in terms of, you know, attracting information efficiently and do some visualization analysis from there. Um, yeah, good. so I would, Any blockers? Um, not really, just uh, we started a lot of uh, a discussion on the data extraction side with um, team uh, vaccine therapeutics. Uh, we'll see how we go from there. Yeah. Sounds great. Uh, vaccines team, Dan Sosa. Hey everybody. Um, so yesterday I had a talk with Marie and pro program management. So just thinking about like keeping the timeline crystal clear in our minds and how we can achieve the first deliverable we want to we want to get get out by the round one deadline. So uh, I think a timeline is pretty clear for that. And so we're just chugging along. Today, uh, I'm gonna start to make like a first pass of what that like final pipeline notebook will look like, just a very rough version, and then we can keep baking in the other layers that we're starting to add on top of it. Uh, ben Jones has been doing incredible work and has been working with the DataViz team to try to make like a nice interactive visualization of just these kind of like drug treatment indication co-occurrences that we're trying to extract from the literature. So if, if that can become a nice like DataViz, that would be very cool as well. Um, as Christine kind of alluded to, we're, how we are joining forces on thinking about annotating the different kinds of evidence that exist in the literature, and that's going to be helpful, and that will be a key part of our deliverable. So we can do that simply with just like a, a string matching kind of way, but then if we can also do that in like a machine learning supervised way, with which will require some training data, we, we want to do that as well. So uh, Christine, me, and Mark are getting on the same page with which annotations we want and how do we tell the annotators to do their job, and we're trying to get that done as soon as possible. Um, yeah, those are the big updates. Sounds great. No blockers? Not right now, no. Amazing. Uh, sounds good. So I think uh, that's a good point to introduce any uh, people that are working on the medical expert integration. Maybe Steve, Natalie, if you're here on the call, to give us a quick update. Um, <clears throat> this is Steve, um, the start my video, uh, the, um, uh, as I've, we, we have, um, you know, kind of two areas where we're getting subject matter expertise. One is in, um, the development of the search criteria and, uh, and the refinement of tasks and the keywords associated with those tasks. And then the uh, reviewing the output 
Uh, yesterday we had a call uh, with uh, and with Shannon, uh, the uh, Heinz demonstrated the Thresher system, which is a tool for helping uh, on that task refinement uh, objective that I talked about earlier and developing keywords. Uh, I think some of the teams are looking at it. She's offered to make um, accounts available for people that want to try it. I don't know that we've uh, figured out exactly a, a, a formal way to apply that across all the tasks, but I do think if people are, I think some of the task groups are interested and um, we'll start experimenting with that um, as a, a way to, to help us use subject matter expertise to refine what we're looking for in the documents related to specific tasks. Um, I, the, um, I'd still, I still think it will benefit this group if we could find sort of a framework that, that, that covers that for all the, the teams. If I look through some of the notebooks, I see a lot of people have embedded keywords into their notebooks and are searching on various terms. Um, I think that we're all gonna benefit if we sort of standardize the way that we're doing that, standardize a repository, um, allow for task specific keywords as an example, but do it in a framework that, that can be applied across all tasks. So. I'll be trying to put together a proposal uh, to do that. And maybe Thresher uh, is a tool that should be used in that process. If you, if the, the demo link is in Slack, you can find it in there to, to view it. You can also, I think, reach out to Shannon Hines if you want uh, some more information. Uh, Sounds great. Then, I, I have a quick question for you. Do you think your group can uh, effectively and quickly transform the initial uh, tasks into very specific questions. And to give you an example, uh, not sure if everyone saw that my, my take on the risk factors notebook, but basically taking those, you know, un unstructured like data on potential risk factors, smoking, pre-existing pulmonary disease, and transforming it into the actual questions. Like, is there an evidence about association of smoking as a factor with increased risks of COVID-19? Do you think your team could help do that for all four tasks? Well, I think that uh, Savannah put together a framework that would allow for that. Uh, I'm uh, reached out to Maya and I'm going to be working with the task, the risk team, uh, and this may be one of the outcomes, but I think we're going to need people from the other tasks uh, to help do that. So um, I posted a couple times her spreadsheet, uh, which uh, does exactly this and has a, a aspect in which you can put keywords that would potentially find uh, documents relative to this question, smoking uh, as an example. Uh, so uh, I, guys, I think I, we have a framework. I don't think that we can do it for all the tasks. I think the task teams need to help. Okay. I think we have the dictionaries. Like we have it made by expert, by doctor, with the very specific, like very, very specific uh, words. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yes. we have general dictionary, and we have all viral uh, diseases uh, that are type uh, of uh, corona dictionary. Just talk to me, and I will uh, direct you to the ready dictionaries that are nice to use. Let's try to package that into something that all of the teams can uh, easily see and, and use. But yeah, I agree. It already exists in a form. And there is some structure. I think there is a, a good way to package that in to be useful. Uh, Steven, let's, let's try to sync on that uh, on Slack. All right. Uh, and in terms of the actual like medical assessments, do you have some update on like teams being able to uh, jump on the call or like just get introduced to the intermediary results and have some assessment? Uh, well, I think that's happening organically in, in each of the tasks or some of the tasks. I don't know that we have as structured a framework for receiving feedback from users, most likely subject matter experts, uh, on the presentation of results and the accuracy of those results. Uh, I think Do you think we need one? Uh, I, I think what I'd like to do is learn what's happening within each of the vertical tasks and see if 
there is some common elements to the approach and then trying to construct a framework uh, for doing that uh, as well. Uh, My, uh, I would say that my expectation is that uh, developing somewhat of a standard framework, much like we just talked about with the task refinement would benefit all of the teams. um, And it would allow us to make requests to subject matter experts in which our request is very specific it's defined, they know exactly what they want to do, and we can use the output that they give us uh, in a way to improve our models. I fear if we don't standardize this, we're going to be asking people to give us input, but we're not going to really know what to do with that input, uh, how to funnel it back into the machine learning set to improve our results. Yeah. So I think, it we, I think we would benefit, but I think we need to learn what's happening mm-hmm. in each task to, to sort of build something that's a a best practice across what's already being done. Sounds so great. One thing that um, really elicited, I thought some good feedback was um, being able to present something for them to review in a somewhat mm-hmm. of a prototyped delivery method. And I'm thinking of um, Mike's Power BI, um, got some really good feedback around that. I don't know if that's, um, I know it was general feedback, but if we have a prototype, even at the subtask level, to put in front of somebody, I think that would help um, prompt some feedback that we're looking for. Sounds I don't great. think that we have that today. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, I'll I'll jump into the next uh, uh, item on the agenda, which is current organizational challenges, resource needs. And I also want to kind of take a minute and uh, showcase the the most amazing thing that is happening right now in our community is this, you know, effect of people jumping in and just creating stuff. And to give you an example, yesterday, um, Ansoon, the guy who created the mind map, he messaged me privately after our meeting. And I hope he doesn't mind me uh, sharing the, the... a screen share but he just uh, messaged me told me hey i have an idea how to do this mind map i'm attaching a fake visualization of my idea let me know what you think and i just told him please do this that's it and he's like all right i posted after every everyone sees it i need to make sure to get all task leaders on board and i just told him just do it it's how we reach this stage and it works don't wait for everyone to agree wait for everyone to say uh, to see the result and say amazing and that's exactly what happened. And I mean, this is golden. This is amazing. And for the people that are newcomers to see this and uh, visualize what exactly is happening, it's, it's amazing. So again, I just want to reinforce everyone's um, abilities to create stuff independently. And please don't be shy. Just create and be guided by the, the feedback of, of collaboration. All right. So I think we, uh, in terms of current organizational challenges, the main thing is we're trying to restructure Trello boards to create this central main board that is not about tasks, but is kind of the router navigator for newcomers to understand here are the the other Trello boards we have for specific tasks. Here is uh, the visual guide. Here are the data sets. Here are different assets that we use. Here is FAQs and just be a central resource place. We're slowly moving some of the uh, cards into different uh, boards. Like we're gonna have admin boards, we're gonna have some communication boards and stuff like that. So just brace yourself for a little bit of change today, but it will bring a lot of uh, positive effects. And as I'm talking about that, I will uh, showcase the, the FAQ that I mentioned earlier on the call, just so everyone is aware of what I was talking about. Uh, so here is the card, Corona Y Core 19 data set, and this is the FAQ. So just, is this the same Core 19 data set Kaggle provided? No, we spent a whole week to create it, it's different. How is it different and stuff like that. So if you're curious about this piece, just go into the Corona Y general so- circle. I think we're gonna rename this to be like main board or something. Uh, But yeah, this is the place. Okay. 
I'm good. Um, I'm out of the items on the agenda. I think it's a good time to uh, have a quick Q&A for newcomers or any people that have suggestions. That's your time. Please speak up. All right. Sounds like everyone is on, on the same page. Um, unless someone uh, from the admin team has important things to announce, uh, we can be wrapping this up. No, I just wanted to add that um, as a, the admin team collectively, we just um, have, but we have agreed that our focus should be on the, uh, the vertical teams right now, um, th rather than across the board trying to um, find a way for the 500 plus people to be productive. <laughs> So I, so I, um, yeah, so I actually, I'm been trying to dive into a task on Dan's team. Um, so Dan, if you, if you see me there, that's great. And I look forward to collaborating with you. Awesome. We're excited to have you. Thanks. Yeah. It makes and we have sense. some ideas. Go ahead. I was going to say, we have some ideas and we're going to be implementing some stuff with user groups today that are going to also help if you're somebody to, to get the rest of the folks also kind of productively churning because that piece Arthur was talking about of people just doing stuff and then letting us know what's been done. There's a lot of cool stuff that can come. Sounds good. All right. Thanks everyone for jumping in. I'll be uploading the recording shortly and stay healthy, stay sane.